Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 18th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Portland, Oregon. Cisco's Talus research team has an interesting report of the latest incarnation of these DNS changing attacks that do affect domain registrars and other domain admin systems. Cisco calls uh, this particular attack wave a sea turtle and it mainly affected government entities in the Middle East and in North Africa. The attacks typically start with direct network attacks against an entity's systems. During these attacks, the attacker is trying to gather credentials that are then being used to control domains that are owned by this particular organization. Once an attacker then has control over the domain, they will change the name servers to point to name servers the attacker controls and they will then subsequently use these domain name servers to return wrong A records for certain host names. This then, of course, uh, leads to rather convincing phishing attacks. A uh, victim will just enter the legitimate URL for a particular website, will be redirected to the attacker's site that impersonates this particular site, and then, of course, the victim will enter their credentials. Couple sort of a little bit surprising features here of this particular attack wave is that the initial compromise is typically using actually fairly old vulnerabilities going back according to Cisco to a 2009 vulnerability in PHP MyAdmin. They also consider Shellshock a part of the repertoire here as well as 2017 vulnerabilities in Cisco switches. Cisco lists four different DNS servers that they have observed being used in this particular attack. The two domains that are used by these uh, DNS servers are intersectdns.com as well as lcjcomputing.com. Like I said, at this point, these attacks are mainly targeting entities in the Middle East and in North Africa. If you're not operating in these regions, then probably you don't have much to worry about this particular attack. But over the last few months, we have seen numerous alerts about very similar attacks being launched against various entities. And Cert.org published a vulnerability notice regarding open source drivers for the Broadcom Wi-Fi chipset. These two drivers, WL and BRCMF Mac, suffer from buffer overflows as well as from frame validation errors if these chipsets are used via USB. Now, while these uh, drivers are used in many open source systems, and of course, Broadcom chipsets are quite popular according to the cert.org notice currently this vulnerability is confirmed in apple synology sykesel and of course broadcom systems and according to bleeping computer there's a new little twist to the ransomware game employed by the nampoi virus this particular uh, ransomware does not actually install itself on affected systems instead it remotely connects to open samba file shares and then uses the remote rewrite access to these file shares in order to encrypt files the ransomware does brute force passwords and not really clear how extensive uh, this list of passwords is in the ransomware, but uh, I would expect it to likely increase if uh, this particular scheme actually does prove uh, to be profitable. There are, of course, lots and lots of Samba servers exposed to the internet. Not clear how many of them are vulnerable uh, to this particular ransomware. That, of course, depends on which usernames and passwords were used to secure these servers. And the German DFN CERT is warning off an increase in attacks against the collaboration software Confluence. These particular attacks are targeting vulnerabilities in the WebDAV and widget 
connector and the patch has only been available since March so it's about a month old vulnerability double check and make sure that you are patched in particular if you are exposing your confluence server to the internet well and that's it for today so thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow